paint pots and queens. The stations on the line were being painted. The engines were surprised. The queen is coming, said the painters. The engines in their shed were excited and wondered who would pull the royal train. I'm too old to pull important trains, said Edward sadly. I'm in disgrace, Gordon said gloomily. The fat controller would never choose me. He'll choose me, of course, boasted James the Red Engine. You, Henry snorted, you can't climb hills. He will ask me to pull it, and I'll have a new coat of paint. You wait and see. The days passed. Henry puffed about proudly, quite sure that he would be the royal engine. One day, when it rained, his driver and fireman stretched a tarpaulin from the cab to the tender to keep themselves dry. Henry puffed into the big station. A painter was climbing a ladder above the line. Henry's smoke puffed upwards. It was thick and black. The painter choked and couldn't see. He missed his footing on the ladder, dropped his paint pot and fell plop onto Henry's tarpaulin. The paint poured over Henry's boiler and trickled down each side. The paint pot perched on his dome. The painter clambered down and shook his brush at Henry. You've spoiled my clean paint with your dirty smoke, he said. Then you take the whole lot and make me go and fetch some more. He stumped crossly away. The fat controller pushed through the crowd. You look like an ice cake, Henry, he said. That won't do for the royal train. I must make other arrangements. He walked over to the yard. Gordon and Thomas saw him coming and both began to speak. Please, sir. One at a time, smiled the fat controller. Yes, Gordon. May Thomas have his branch line again? Hmm, said the fat controller. Well, Thomas, please, sir, can Gordon pull coaches now? The fat controller pondered. Hmm, you've both been quite good lately, and you deserve a treat. When the queen comes, Edward will go in front and clear the line. Thomas will look after the coaches, and Gordon will pull the train. Oh, sir, said the engines happily. The great day came. Percy, Toby, Henry and James worked hard bringing people to the town. Thomas sorted all their coaches in the yard. Beep, 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 they're coming. Edward steamed in looking smart with flags and bright paint. Two minutes passed. Five, seven, ten. Poop, poop. Everyone knew that whistle and a mighty cheer went up as the Queen's train glided into the station. Gordon was spotless and his brass shone. Like Edward, he was decorated with flags, but on his buffer beam, he proudly carried the royal arms. The Queen was met by the fat controller, and before doing anything else, she thanked him for their splendid run. Not at all, your majesty, he said. Thank you. We have read, said the Queen to the Fat Controller, a great deal about your engines. May we see them, please? So he led the way to where all the engines were waiting. Peep, peep, whistled Toby and Percy. They're coming. Shh, 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 hissed Henry and James. But Toby and Percy were too excited to care. The fat controller told the queen their names, and she talked to each engine. Then she turned to go. Percy bubbled over. Three cheers for the queen, he said. Peep, 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 whistled all the engines. The fat controller held his ears, but the queen, smiling, waved to the engines till she passed the gate. Next day, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched her coaches, and to Edward and Gordon, who took her away. And no engines ever felt prouder than Thomas and Edward and Gordon the big engine.